My For You page recently has been full of jewelers carving these amazing rings out of wax and my algorithm must know me very well because I it led me to discover this company called Workbench that lets you carve your own rings at home out of wax and this is not at all an ad i just found it and thought it was very interesting and wanted to do a video about the process with you guys now i absolutely love jewelry and i especially love when it has some sort of sentimental value so in addition to the fact that i have been wanting to carve a ring out of wax i also think this is such a cool idea to be able to custom make your own ring so of course i'm going to take you through the entire process i have the ring so i'm going to show you the final product but i wanted to talk a little bit about the company and the process first so this company was started by two jewelers and they have several different options. They have a stacking ring, a signet ring. They have like a bunch of different kits on their site, but I went for the stacking ring version, which we'll talk more about later. But basically you carve the ring out of wax and then you send it to them. They make a mold of the wax and then they melt the wax. So it's called lost wax casting. So once the mold is made, the wax is completely gone and only the mold remains. So then they take that mold and then they cast your ring out of whatever metal you choose. You can do solid gold, sterling silver, or gold vermeil, which is just a thick coat of um, gold over top of sterling silver. So without further ado, let me show you how I made my ring and the process of designing it and all that stuff. And then of course I will show you the ring at the end. Okay, so let's open this up and see what's inside. Starting off with a few of the more boring bits, there's a user guide which actually comes with an access code to be able to watch tutorials online, and then the form that you'll fill out when you actually go to send in your ring as well as some safety tips. It also comes with a list of all the gemstones they offer and the prices, as well as a prepaid envelope that you can use to send your ring in to get it cast. Okay, so now getting into the good stuff. So this particular kit comes with three wax mold or wax rings. And this is the stacking ring kit again, so it comes with a bit of a thinner wax. So we have our wax, and then of course we have to have something to carve the wax with, so it comes with this craft knife. And then for safety, we have a rubber thimble. We also have a ring sizer, and this does use UK sizes here. We also have a little pencil that says the workbench on it for sketching out our designs. And then I believe this box is what we will be sending the ring back in. And then underneath here, we have three different coarseness levels of sandpaper. And then we have a design sheet here. So this is how we can kind of figure out what we want to do with the ring before we get started. So that's everything it comes with. And then the first step is going to be getting the ring to actually fit on the finger that I want it to fit on. I'm actually going to take my rings off so I don't scratch them in this process. I've just watched the sizing tutorial and basically what we're going to do is roll up this sandpaper and then just sand out the inside so just so you can see the difference here is the size that it started out as and then here's the size that it ended up as Going into this, I really wasn't sure what design I wanted to do. I had a few things in mind, but I wanted to have a backup in case I didn't end up liking any of them. So I decided to start off with a, a very plain, simple, smooth band. And I think this was actually a great place to start because it helped me kind of master all the techniques that I was going to need later when I started doing more complicated designs. And the first of these techniques is to sketch out the design of the band before you actually start carving it. Now it's time to whip out the craft knife and the thimble. So they say to only put it out one or two clicks maximum. And then they also say that you want to start carving on the edge here, not on the flat top. And then we want to get kind of close to the line, but not all the way to the line. And then we're going to sand down the rest of it. So time to start the carbon. So I have carved down quite a bit and now I'm going to take the coarse sandpaper and sand it down and then go in with the smooth sandpaper to get it even smoother. So this is just to take more of the weight off and then the smooth sandpaper will be to actually like smooth it out and finish it. I have it pretty much polished, but, but they say that you can run your knife along the edge of it to kind of get off all of the sand paper texture. I'm being like 
so gentle, absolutely no pressure, just running it along the side. I think it's ready. And just for reference, here's where it started. For my second ring, I decided to try out a thin flat top signet ring, and I really liked this. They had a tutorial on their site, so it was a really easy process, and it turned out really nicely. It just felt like something I could just buy anywhere. It didn't really feel like something personal to me, and it didn't feel like I had custom made this ring, if that makes sense. And obviously there's only so much originality that can go into a very thin stacking ring. So I wasn't looking to do something that had never been done before, but I just wanted to do something that kind of focused on more organic shapes that even if I found something similar, nothing would have the same exact curves and gemstone placement and stuff like that. So after three tries, I had finally made something I was really happy with. And then tragedy struck when I was trying to show my family on FaceTime. Never fear, it's been about a week and I just got my extra wax. Three extras. So let's try this again. It's time to break out the old tools. And I once again got the size it yourself option. So I gotta size it real quick. It now fits on my finger. And I'm going to make a mark kind of outlining the general shape I want and also just to ensure that I don't go too thin because I think that was the problem last time I went too thin and that's why it broke so gotta make sure not to do that again but you also want to make sure that it's not too thick because then it'll be like in between your fingers and you won't be able to close your fingers correctly so it's a balance so that's the general idea Okay, I've done the initial carving and I've made sure to leave it thick enough so that when I go through and polish it and add more divots that it doesn't get too thin still, I hope. <laughs> the thing I learned about this process is that it's really about very small tweaks here and there. You just find a general shape that you like and then you just keep refining and refining and refining. Until you get something that you love and this is the final form of my wax version of my ring and I loved it and I very 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 gently put it into the box and then I decided that I wanted to add some gemstones this is definitely not a requirement it's just an option if you want to and I decided that I wanted to so I took my ring out of the box again very carefully and then marked on there where I wanted the gemstones to be and because the ring is so thin, I wasn't sure if that placement would be possible, so I gave a second option on my sheet that I filled out, and then I packed it up and waited the four to six weeks for it to come in. It has been six long weeks, but the ring is finally ready, and I can't wait to show you guys. I have already opened it because I didn't have a chance to film when I got it, and I needed to open it immediately. And I also just wanted to be able to, you know, have my own genuine reaction to it, but I wanted to walk you through this unboxing process basically. So it comes in this little booklet and then you open it up and there's a little thank you note which is very sweet and then there's some information and then the ring is inside this little envelope and I'm feeling nervous to show you guys but I think you'll like it. So without further ado here is the ring and this is the front of it. You can see there are some stones set in there which we'll talk about but it is a gold verme, which is just a very thick layer of gold over sterling silver. I originally was planning on getting it cast in solid gold, but it was just a little bit more expensive than I was planning on spending when I got the invoice back. However, that being said, I do think the gold verme is a really good option. It seems very high quality and it's not too yellow. Sometimes I feel like with gold verme, it just is like way different yellow color than my solid gold pieces, but this blends in really nicely and I think it seems like very good quality and thick. The two darker stones that you see here are London Blue Topaz. I live in London and I just love that they are named after London. And then the um, white stone is a white sapphire. And just in case you're looking into carving a ring and you're not getting gemstones, I'll show you the other side. You can see how nice it looks even without the gemstones in there. I could not have asked for a better experience. This was so fun and they were really easy to work with and so nice and yeah. That's the ring. Hope you like it.
so yeah that is my ring I really hope you guys enjoyed this video I know it's a little bit different than the videos that I normally make but I do really love making these sort of more creative videos like my scrapbooking videos in this video so let me know if you like them as well and I will hopefully make more in the future and yeah I hope to see you next time bye